What is going on, guys? It is. This is gonna be ridiculous. <laughs> this is gonna this be might just be episode. for Patreon, guys. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. So we just got done doing the live stream on Nerd's channel. It was a lot of fun. We were on for like two hours, right? Over two hours. Over two hours. Yeah, Over like two, hours. two hours. Yeah. A lot of drinking involved. And then we came back upstairs <laughs> to film this episode because I was really I was upset because. We didn't get to film an episode the weekend when I was here, just because there was a lot of shit going on. So, we're going to do something that I totally would never would have thought would have happened. But we're going to film with ball pythons. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. It's all but good. no. Um, so Nerd is actually uh, one of the biggest producers for the country of ball pythons. Uh, they you have, have come up with so many different species, of, or not species, uh, different morphs. types alone, yeah, yeah. morphs alone, right? Yep. Yeah, Kevin's got close to f like hundreds under his name, and he stopped like claiming the world's first, I think, back in 2014 or 2015. And since then, he's probably done another 150 world's first <laughs> oh God, different that's, combinations. That's incredible. That's, so it's, it's silly. So ball really pythons silly. are the world's <clears throat> famous first starter snakes, but they mm -hmm. come in so many different morphs. And the scaleless now, too, which you showed us yesterday. Yeah. Scaleless snakes, uh, which there are some venomous snakes, too, now, like Western. So I like to say Western Diamondbacks are the ball pythons of... The venomous world, world. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they have so many different morphs and patterns, and now the scaleless. And over the past three years, the scaleless have started to take off. But it's like you can't really lotion a snake that's, that's that, venomous. That's, yeah. It's a little harder yeah. than a ball python. So, uh, but yeah, he yesterday he was putting a lot of the different males with females to create new morphs, right? Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah, um, and also to create morphs that they want more that are more popular in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to go over some of those right now. Uh, also. The uh, what is it called? The fucking scanning thing. Ultrasound. Oh, ultrasound. Ultrasound. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a long night. Will had a lot to drink. I did. <laughs> 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 uh, but the ultrasound, um, which I crazy, I didn't think you could actually do, but to check the follicle size uh, to see when the females are ready to or better to produce. Yeah. Um, in the millimeter size of the follicles. So that's really actually interesting and that's probably one of the best investments I could think of for something like this. So we are yes. literally in a room right now with well, over, 300, two, over 300, 300 ball pythons. pythons. Yeah. So this is crazy. You're seeing a quarter of it probably in the screen, but Summer's <laughs> leaning against a wall of ball pythons yeah. and then also past her is another wall of ball pythons. And this is only one of the rooms. Yeah, This. so this is the primary room for females so we used to have another half room that was females uh that we we downsized to kind of focus a little bit um so even more kind of nerd history for ball python so like all of the morph names that exist now like kevin started all of that so like when the bu so the bumblebee uh which kevin created was the first uh ball python combo that was two genes and one snake nobody knew that was possible to do with ball pythons before that um, and all the names that we've created for all these things now, Kevin like started that, um, uh, because he was like at the time nobody, was a bumblebee, sorry. Oh, <laughs> nobody was uh, nobody was really interested in ball pythons like that. So Kevin was like, well, I got to get people excited about these things because I like them. So I'm going to give this thing a weird name. And then that helped make them take off. Which so I'm got, sure like, most people know, but ball pythons have a very common name, ball python, because mm -hmm. instead of being a defensive, aggressive snake or anything like that, they literally, if they feel threatened or worried, they just curl into a tight little ball. Yep. From Africa originally, I yep. believe. Yes. Yeah, so yep. West Africa. Yep. So, um, and they originally were just black and brown snakes, but now the colors and some of the colors you showed me yesterday, I. I thought it was didn't fake. even know what happened. Yeah, yeah. They didn't even. Some of them looked like like craft mac and cheese. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can show that one too. Yeah, yeah. Like that is, uh, the, and the camera won't do that justice. Like, no. To see that in person, it's like this can't it's be something real. different. I just I just checked. So if you're a ball python person, you you've pr you're probably aware of like World of Ball Pythons, which has like the most up to date list of ball python mutations that exist on the market right now. And it's over seventy two hundred. 
ball python combos. So, and that's like base morphs all the way up to like multi gene combos. So the, the 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 possibilities are totally endless, you know. And like one of the things that sets Kevin apart from a lot of the other guys that are doing ball python stuff is he doesn't like to follow trends. He's never liked to follow trends. Um, so he's into like he's working on like making snakes that are almost patternless, and then almost making snakes that are like so patterned you can't understand what's happening. Um, so we've got some stuff here. We're trying to like zero in on a few things. Like obviously some morphs are, are a little bit more popular than others. Um, so we're just trying to create really cool things that a. Well, let's, let's find some of these breeders you had put together. All right, too. yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff. Okay, so we were in here last night. <clears throat> yep. Okay, so all the tags. That's right. Yeah. So all these tags, anything that's got a tag like this in front of it, this, these are the male tags. Um, so this pairing right here, this is an interesting pairing. Um, so this is a super pastel fire bongo, which is this animal right here, breeding to a hidden gene woma and she odium. So bongo, hidden gene woma is still pretty new to the industry and then pretty much every other combination we can make in this would, has never been created before. So this is which something is, new you're trying yeah, to Yeah, so there's a lot of brand new stuff. So the odium gene is a nerd specific gene. We haven't really released too many uh, into the market. So pretty much anything odium that comes out of this will be brand new to the industry. Um, so there's a lot of possible. I've got this male cycling through this animal into like an inferno, which is another hidden gene woma combo. Um, for those of you wondering too, there's no water bowl in this for a reason. And yes. I didn't know this. You taught me this yesterday, but it was because of bacteria. You don't want transfers between snakes that by chance have a bacteria to infect more than the snakes they're going to put to breed with them. Yep. So between transferring the males, he will soak them so they can get a nice drink of water. Once the male is taken out of this out of this drawer, then he will put a water bowl back in there. That's something I exactly. never even yeah. thought about. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't breed snakes like you guys do, so I can totally understand that because bacteria is something very scary when it comes to breeding animals and yeah. snakes. Period. Exactly. Yeah. The water bowl is one of those few things. If you're going to put snakes together, that they would share in common, other than living space. You know. Um, so, and if God forbid, if the animal might be starting with a respiratory infection that you, you're not seeing yet, you know the bacteria from that in the water bowl, the other animal goes in to drink, yep. and if you don't see it right away, boom, it just it spreads to everything. Yep. You know, so you take the water bowl out of there, and <clears throat> we're not really going more than 24 hours without a water bowl in there. You oh, know, so, so you it's only keep not them there for that long. Yeah, if they're if they're locked up, we'll keep them in there longer. If I come in and it's like, oh, they're locked, I'll leave them alone for a little while. Um, but if I come in in the morning, or something, or? yeah, if they're courting, I'll still leave them in there because we want to try to get that lock. But um, if I, I remember yesterday too, you literally put some stuff in and they immediately started. Immediately courting. started, yeah. So we've got like, oh, some that's... males that are like ready to go, and we've got some other males. Like this guy was a slow starter. Um, I had him paired with that Inferno a few times before he was even interested in breeding and then like something switched on and he was like, yep, time to go, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, cool, bro, thank you for not being a waste, um, you know, so it takes, it takes some time for sure, but um, yeah, the removal of the water bowl is a big thing, um, obviously, like, we, we, with this many snakes, we're always wanting to prevent things like mites and, and anything like that, because mites are great vehicle of transferring diseases from one animal to another. Um, I so freak out when I get mites in a small collection like mine compared to this, so yeah. I can imagine what you would go through. It's ridiculous. This. The, it could be catastrophic, you know, so yeah. we're always preventatively treating, you know, every single time. Whoever's cleaning the enclosures, like they always know we're using preventamite, we're using Jurassic Park, a whole bunch of different things yeah. to make sure that we're treating enclosures so that we don't potentially cross-contaminate that, you know, with a collection this size, that's that's like a really big issue. Um, so this is another interesting combo. I'm going to take these out so you don't have to deal with staring at poop. But I like poop on my channel. Do you didn't like you know poop that? on your channel? I, I will actually well. pull it apart to make sure the snakes are nice and healthy. And yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Oh, that's... yeah, dude, I, I play with poop. Like that's that. because you're a venomous guy. We don't do that with ball pythons. Right, so we're a little more civilized too. here. Oh, you know. oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, so this is another really interesting combo. So this is a lemonback uh, GHI pastel and a hidden gene woma pastel and she. First up, how the heck? hell do you remember this? So, okay, so reference for me, I've been working with snakes for almost 20 years and ball pythons are like my big thing. And Kevin was like my mentor coming up with ball pythons. So okay. I would literally like come up here and be like, what is 
does this gene do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he would like pull me into rooms and be like, this is how you identify this gene, this is how you identify this gene. Because it's not like even Rob, listening to Rob talk about all this genetics, and it, it just... It's a lot. And I know this is your guy's job, but like, mm -hmm. holy shit. It's still a lot. So like my job, so I came in about nine months ago, and I came in like right in the middle of egg laying season, and like the very beginning of hatching season, and it was literally my job as babies were hatching to ID morphs and set babies up set baby ball pylons up. So I literally was like thrown into the fire because we've got some females here that them by themselves have like six or seven genes and then the males might have like five or six genes on top of it. So I'm literally there looking for sometimes the most minute subtlety, like I'm looking for an extra dot somewhere on the snake to, to like give me a is. viewpoint of something. You know, like when we look at hidden gene woma combos, like, okay, so this female, so we look at hidden gene woma combos, the, the head tends to be like muted. It's just got this blushed, muted vibe to mm -hmm. it. Um, that's hit, any hidden gene woma combo, you're gonna see that. Um, that you might not see depending on what else is happening in the snake, Anywhere but the head, body, yeah. yeah, but the head is, is that key giveaway. Okay. You know, so like looking like stuff for that and then like looking at Enchi tends to have like two blushed out dots right at the base of that darkness of the head. So I'm like looking for little things like that on an animal that's almost totally patternless. That's crazy. I'm looking for those really subtle things. Dude, it's like most people wouldn't even think about it. They wouldn't even think about it, yeah. No. So I remember coming here, visiting Kevin, and I was like, I really like hidden gene woma. That's like a morph that has always caught my attention. And everything back, this is like nine or ten years ago, anything that he had that was hidden gene woma was hidden gene woma granite. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand... Like, I've seen single gene granites, and they would look really speckled out and all this stuff, and I didn't see that in the hidden gene womas. So I was like, I don't understand how he's saying that's hidden gene woma granite. I don't see it. So I remember coming up here, and I was like, Kevin, I don't understand how you ID granite in this thing. And he, like, grabs me, and he's like, I'll show you, and, like, brings me into this room, <laughs> and, like, he pulls out this big honking hidden gene woma granite, and he's like, look at that big dot right there, right behind the head. And I was like, yeah. He's like, that's granite. And I'm like, that one dot? Really? Are we going to go down the dinker road, bro? Like, <laughs> what are we doing? And he's like, no, this means it's granite. And I'm like, okay, how do you know that definitively? And then he would show me like five other or, or whatever combinations of yeah. hidden gene woman granite. And I was like, okay, what does it look like without granite? And he'd show me a hidden gene woman that wasn't granite, and it was totally different. There was no dot behind the head, but the pattern was cleaner. And I started to notice that the eye stripes didn't have... The tiny little peppering of black spots. So I was like, oh, so it's also missing this. And he was like, oh, you can look at things. Oh and I'm God. like, so this is yeah. this is one out of so many thousands yeah, of yeah. different species that you can ID yeah, by just simply morphs, looking yeah, at yeah. little different things. Yep. That, yeah. That's insane. so like you know, like look at this. So these guys are just trashing the cave. Um, so this is a bright bro. Ball python right there. It's a ball python, yeah. It's like, no, don't touch me, please. Please that'll, save that'll me. Probably be the so female, this is right? like, yep, this is the female. So it's like pastel, lucifer, fader, yellow belly stuff. So seven different names in one. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we call it bright bro. And then this is like hidden gene woma, anchi, leopard, odium, nonsense. But if you look at like hidden gene woma leopard, you would see way more pattern, but Odium totally blows it out and you don't really see too much and she's reducing the pattern even more. You look at that, you get that blushed out head that I was talking about with the Hidden Gene Woma stuff. Oh yeah, it totally okay. gets muted out like that. And then Odium blows it out even more. So the Odium gene is kind of like a wild card gene and I'm, I'm waiting to get Kevin to do a, a video specifically on Odium because especially after 2019 season, looking at what odium does we we've already had the ideas like i have a whole rack of odium stuff in here so yeah. i'm seeing kind of what it does and then all of a sudden i'm like that doesn't make any sense and it doesn't make any sense to what we already know the gene does so what the hell so it's blowing out pretty much well do you have with the help of the other one too but you yep. said it's pretty much blowing out the pattern color so that's yep. why i mean this one is very white compared to but see to me and only going off of what you told me like mm -hmm. i would say this is like that cinnamon uh, the coloration you were talking about, how it's like, but that's overpowering brown. But now yeah. with so many different speed or uh, morphs in it, it's mm -hmm. like 
it's crazy you say that because it's like almost like a camo in a way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's like you, you'll never like you'll never know it all, which is that's, that's crazy. which is really silly. The only people that are truly gonna know it all are the breeders. Like the breed, exactly. exactly. What are the chances that we can find some snakes doing the dirty right, right now? Right now. Oh, Actually. oh, boom over here. So this over is here. yep. So this is a blackhead oh, the to next a lesser edgy out. pinstripe malum. Wait, wait, so I've been dying for him to get to say this. What are these snakes doing right now? These motherfuckers is fucking! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've been waiting for that. Yep. But so uh, is that male is, and normal? I'm, I'm sorry, this is this is a blackhead ball python, and it is currently in coitus with a female. And uh, He's a black, wait, what? He's currently in coitus. That's a blackhead ball python. It's, <laughs> it's a more, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a hyper melanistic animal that tends to have a little bit more black going on than say your average normal. Okay. Um, the browns are a little bit more brown. It's quite contrasted overall. But so the interesting thing about this is pretty much everything we're going to produce with this. This is what happens when oh, we drink. Oh, you just scared him. Look at Sorry, that. Sorry, this is what happens when we drink. It's true. But so this essentially we're what we're doing here is we're creating all new ball python genes. So I don't know what Kevin's going to think about this because he didn't know I paired these up yet. But, you know, it doesn't suck. Well, what are the chances of Kevin seeing this video? <laughs> <laughs> the chance of Kevin walking in this room right now. I mean, it might be a little higher than normal, but that's why we have the blockade. Of well, he's down there playing the guitar door. right now, probably still. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, so we've got so many other. This is cool stuff, too. So this is like... That one looks crazy. This male is really cool. So this is like spider, lucifer, orange, dream, yellow belly, calico stuff for all you spider ball haters. Get fucked. Um, and then I, this I, is I, like, I had a spider ball one on. That's right. And then this Ooh, angry really female. Weird. This is a lesser malum, maybe super malum. No, no pinstripe in this. Will get your shit together. I don't do uh, balls, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's my specialty, but you know, I, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, look, he's mad at you, bro. Right? He's look. like, damn right, you better like balls. That's right, bruh. So dog. this is this is just another. I'm just trying to get this uh, more stuff into this malum gene. Um, I'm just trying to create things that, you know, I mean, th it's a business. You know, nerd is a business. Yeah. So we need to make things that we can obviously sell, but we also want to make things that we can hold back to breed for future projects and stuff. Um, you know, we have a bunch of hold back animals in one of the other rooms, but you know, it's it's also about like creating, just creating cool shit. You know, like well, we, we actually. Wanna, can we go look at some of the cool ass shit you guys have created? 100%. Go in the other room. But before we do that, I have to show you the mac and cheese balls. Oh my god, I, I thought they were in the other room too. Nope, they're right here. Look so this, at that color. This male's right actually, he's currently courting her, so he's, okay, his yeah. tail's kind of like wrapped around her. But, so this is, I gotta read it, I don't remember what it is. Super Enchi Pastel, whoa, yellow belly posset pied. Going to Pastel Orange Dream Enchi Lucifer. So the camera probably doesn't do this justice, but that bottom big snake which is the yep. female yep is the same exact color as the craft and cheese mac and cheese powder yeah. salt like yeah, powder. yeah. Like, it's crazy it, as soon as you add that milk it gets that weird orange pasty color that is the same exact colors it's it's nuts yep and i can show you some some of her babies from from 2019 that are holding their color of like oh amazingly. like her amazingly yeah yeah it's what was it's, she it's with? crazy she was her. bred to. Well, she was bred to like a gravel thing because we got a lot of super stripe stuff out of that. So that epistatic relationship between those two genes it gives you like super stripe and puma and all the whole yellow belly complex. There's a, there's a lot of epistasis that exists along that whole complex, which is, is quite unique. Yeah, it's both, their, it's their bed fucked. sheet. Yeah, you know, got to stay warm at night. You know. Oh, but, let's uh, check out the other room. Yeah, let's do that. Because I'm sure if this video was much longer, people would just stop watching They'd it. Stop watching. <laughs> 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 Ball pythons! Woo! Are we filming? Yeah. Yes. Is that all film? Yep. Fuck yeah! Look at that shit. <laughs> That's fucking gold. I that can okay. go to Patreon. Maybe. Okay. Probably. All right. So, okay. So that really cool mac and cheese snake we were just looking at. So these are a couple of her babies. So these are. This is an Enchi Super Stripe. And this is a pastel Enchi Super Stripe. So normally these snakes would not be so contrasted. They um, both have actual blue eyes. Yeah, that's from, that's so crazy. that's from like pastel. Look at those bluish green eyes. And then this is just like badass. But just, just badass. Yeah, it's just badass. And I'm a little drunk. So, you know, whatever we're getting, we're getting in this. Yeah. 
But um, yeah, so so whatever's happening genetically there, it, we're, we're seeing it immediately in the offspring. So this is just a really uh, unique bit of ball python genetics because you know, ball pythons. But okay, so it's it's like after midnight and Summer doesn't even want to fucking be here anymore. She's ready to get the fuck out of here. So I'm just going to keep this rolling and we're not going to let Will so talk. The, the cold so, hard facts about ball pythons are yes. that there's such a high demand for them. And now that all these different morphs are coming out, they're, they're, yes, their prices are going up because there are so many genetics in one particular snake. Mm -hmm. But it's like, no matter how much the expense of the snake is, somebody will buy it. So it's, it's like, tricky. yeah, somebody, especially what you're telling me about some of the, the babies, like, what was it? I think you said nine or $15,000 15, for right. one snake and yeah. people buy that? Like that's... Yeah. So it's, it's, so the industry has changed a lot in the last 10 to 12 years. You yeah. know what ball pythons were. I mean, so like to put it in perspective, back then like a male core glow ball python was $65,000 just for a single gene male core glow. Yeah. And when that market started to dip for various reasons, which I won't go into because it's way too long, um, everything else started to kind of readjust. And then we got into this point where it was like, ball pythons are pretty cheap. And it wasn't until people like, um, Justin Kabelka, like a few others, got like really social media popular and were showing off the really cool things they were doing. They were doing like six, seven gene animals, like a lot, a lot of the bigger breeders have been doing, uh, but publicizing it. So it was just yeah. drawing more attention to it because keeping reptiles is, is taboo as, as a whole, whether it's venomous or not. You know, yeah. it's it's still technically a taboo. So the fact that we're starting to get more attention to it. We have to find ways to appeal to those newer keepers, you know. So the way we're doing that is with these really cool animals. So like this is like an Inferno Fader Orange Stream Calico. So that's like Hidden Genoma Pastel Granite Yellow Belly Fader Orange Stream Calico. Maybe something else. So there's seven genes so in the snake. So it's pretty much a soup bowl. Yeah, it's a melting pot of genetics. Jesus. Yeah. So and that. This thing, I think there's something else going on in this just because it doesn't look like what it should, in my opinion. But, I mean, we just won't know until we raise it up and breed it. So it's yeah. a female, so we, we gotta raise it up for a while, as opposed to a male that we could get ready like in a year five or something. Five six years? Um, like three. There? Three years? Like about three years, yeah, like two and a half, three years. Pretty good. See, I don't know anything about gull pythons, just because, yeah, they're, they're, they're a great basic snake to start with, but it's like, to go into it as you guys do, Mm -hmm. it is, and again, it's overwhelming. You're one of the biggest breeders of these fucking snakes, mm -hmm. so it's like it's crazy that you can. I can't remember everybody's name in this building. Yeah, and you're sitting here telling me these seven genetic snakes, like it's written on the back of your fucking hand. <laughs> like, yeah, there's been a couple of times <laughs> this week that I've literally just been like, "Crap, where are all these people's names?" <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like it happens. <laughs> it's nuts. It happens for sure. Um, that one's like three different snakes in one. Yeah, so this one's really cool. This one, we stared at this one while it was in the egg for a while, and uh, I'm not going to tell you what's in it. It's uh, The only thing I'll tell you is it's visually pied. It's a visual pied combo, and that's all you get to know, and you get to just be jealous that we have it and you don't. So is this a first? <laughs> yep, this is a world first. World's this is an first. odium. It's only. Like, yeah, it's like an odium pied combo. So out of so. how many eggs is this the only one? Uh, this was one of six eggs I from this all clutch. that written on that little container? Yeah. Jesus. Six of six. I, I had to come up with a whole ID system for everything. That's it's crazy. like all the organization of this year is all So you're me. the one that comes up with it. That's why you remember it all. Yeah. I still wouldn't remember it all. I and I'm, and I'm working to improve it even more so that we have more information on the animals. So like, especially now as people, like newer people are coming in, we always get the question like, well, what was the pairing? that produced it, yeah. which is a valid question for somebody That's who's curious about genetics and stuff, but uh, it's hard when, you know, we produced over 230 clutches of ball pythons, so it's hard to remember all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and like record keeping is difficult when you have this many, so uh, Kevin, Kevin keeps a lot of that stuff in his mind, which is great, but no when he's not here, he's all over the place. Yeah, but when he's not here doing it, and then it's us, you know, we can't, we, you know, it makes no sense for us to be running around, Kevin, what made this yeah, snake? Like, he's, you know, at some point he's going to be like, get the fuck away from okay, me. Okay, well, so, so, honestly though, final question. Yes. Because this can't be a 30 minute long. Yeah, it can't. Yeah, it's fine. World only. Yeah. How much money is that snake worth? I, I mean, you're probably talking into five figures, so over 10 grand. 
Over ten grand yeah. for one snake. Yeah. Because it's probably like one, two, three, four, or five, six, seven, six or seven codoms, and then a recessive. So I could Express. pay off half of summer student loans with that. Yeah. <sighs> and twenty percent of mine. Subscribe to Nerd <laughs> if you're not already. Subscribe right. to us if you're not already. Smash that like button if you haven't already. I will be tagging your Instagram in this video, Yay. definitely. Uh, he also has a very big collection of snakes as well um, as managing every Nerd. single reptile that comes in and out of Nerd. Uh, yeah. So Jeremy, guys, uh, awesome guy. So definitely follow him, follow Nerd, subscribe to Nerd, and we will see you guys in the next video. I can't hit the camera because it's too far away.